Good morning. It's Monday, April 6th. We're going to put together all the things we learned last week and now into drawing a still life. So the thing that I want you to do is go around your house, find three objects. Could be a vase, some fruit, any three objects you can put together. Don't make them really big because what we're going to learn today is the process of how you start drawing a still life. Okay, so get you three things. This is a vase, I lost my apple, an apple and a pear. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to try to look at them and say, what basic uh, form are there? You know, as far as in uh, grade school, we learned that there was the square, circle, triangle, rectangle, and then in three-dimensional, you called this a sphere, and then you had cylinders, and you had cubes and cones. Well, we're gonna look at those basic forms and say, well, the apple starts out, and it's basically a, a, a circle as far as, to start off as far as to space it on the page. Our pair is either, you could call it a cone, or you could have like two circles, put them together, and then when you combine them together, and maybe and a pear is not real real uh, rounded. It kind of has some bumps, and you can add its area and then take the, the circle apart. Then you can have a pear. Our uh, vase that we're going to use today is basically a circle. Oh, we got an airplane on that side. A circle. We have a line and it's got kind of a cone on, on top where we can kind of bend it around like this. So we're gonna put them all together. And again, it's very hard to be able to do the video with you seeing it this way, me seeing it this way. So I took a picture of my still life that I put together so we can draw it together. All right, so when you're starting with a still life, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna block things out, which means that you don't want to spend a lot of time doing real detailed things until you figure out that it's all going to fit on your page. So we're going to pretend that this is my page on this half. All right. And so I'm going to start. I've got a line at the back where we used, I put construction paper to kind of create a uh, background for the still life. All right. So we're going to take that line down. And behind this is a table so that we have this table kind of so we're starting out where we know where we're going to put things all right and our vase starts out with a four shortened circle so lightly we're going to draw that four shortened circle down here we're going to draw a circle that's the bottom of the vase kind of get your arms going and then you have this line so we want to make it even on both sides so we're going to take and go from the edge of our four shortened circle and curve onto that circle. And on the other side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to block this out. Then you look at it and say, mm, I think it needs a little bit more. Once you get that done, we're going to erase the lines that we don't need. So we have our vase blocked out. We don't see from this angle, we're not seeing inside the vase. We're just seeing the outside of it. All right, we have a apple on the side. So we know that we have a, we're gonna start out with a circle. It's gonna be a little bit below the bottom of that to make it look like it's three dimensional. That's another way that you can kind of trick the eye. As far as if you put something in front of it, it's called, the art term is just called overlapping. That's the word we all know, but that's actually in the art books, overlapping, and that shows like three dimensions. And you begin to kind of block out where you want that apple to be. All right, then we're going to put our pear on the other side. They're actually kind of touching. So we're going to start off with kind of a circle and a smaller circle and make our lines kind of curve around. And 
and erase what we don't need. Now we have it blocked out. Okay, so we'll make sure that you guys can see these. All right. All right, so now we're going to begin to start looking at our shadows and decide where it's light and dark. All right, so we know that it's darker behind this vase. So I'm just gonna start by adding some dark behind that because that vase is light at the top, similar to our airplane that we did yesterday. And so we don't wanna draw that vase dark because it's white. So what makes it look white in our drawing is the fact that we have some dark behind it. You can see that it's really dark behind the vase. And it gets lighter as it goes out. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to look and see where we see things darker and lighter so that we have some lights, some mediums, and some darks. Okay, the light on this side of our paper is just a little bit lighter so that you can see where that fold is. So we're not gonna make this side as dark toward the top as it comes around. All right, now where this vase is behind, you can see that the pear is a lighter value than the vase. The vase is darker. So again, this part is gonna be darker than our fruit because we see some dark parts because it is behind. And then I'm gonna start changing the way I'm shading because I want the vase to look like it's rounded. So we're gonna kind of start shading this direction with, so that all of our pencil lines will kind of help us get the idea that this vase is rounded. Shading is actually a very relaxing thing if you don't get in a big hurry where you can just start, keep looking at what you're drawing and just say lights and darks and you can almost get mesmerized into it where you're just like putting a little bit more and a little bit more and you have to know that it doesn't really hurt if you put something where you're not supposed to because you're just using a pencil and so you can always erase it so that takes away 
the scared feeling of, oh my gosh, what if I do this and this and this, I'm gonna mess up. You really can't mess up. Because you can always just go back and if you get it too dark, you can add a little bit of light by just erasing it. If you get it too light, you can always add some dark. And we're gonna just gradually make this go up to the top of this face. A little bit of highlight on that side, a little bit right there where it's coming around. Now, that's the start of our vase. Um, we're going to kind of get this started just a little bit, and we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to work on our apple and our pear. One of the things about the apple is you'll see that it kind of has some lines going up this direction. So again, the more that you can make your, your shading lines go in the same direction, in the same direction as your uh, objects that you're drawing, the better off you'll be. All right, let's come back tomorrow and we'll finish this up. Okay, we didn't quite finish our still life, but we will get to it tomorrow and finish it up Add the little details and really make it pop. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Wash your hands.